Deborah Murphy here. We are at Farm Tech, joined by Clint Yerke and Greg Seklich. And we today are talking about the Crop Production Innovation Team. Is that correct? Clint, tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, our Crop Production Team, our Crop Production Innovation Team is our full title, but uh, we are a, a group of agronomy specialists that um, we, we try to provide value to the overall canola industry by um, interacting uh, with a with a much wider uh, part of, of the of the value chain overall like working with researchers along with agronomists along with growers to um, to make sure that that we are growing this crop as profitably and as sustainably as is possible so that's kind of our overall goal of, of the crop production innovation team so what do you offer above or that's different from a regular agronomist well, our, our model is is that that we're really focused on training the trainer, and so agronomists are are often the, the direct interface with with producers to provide the the best management practices for uh, for any production issue that a that a grower might have. Where we see our value is is that that we we train the agronomists to to provide uh, th those best management practices, and oftentimes we we are working directly with the researchers themselves to to craft those best management practices. Um, a, a good example would be on, um, on club root, as, as, a, as an example. Um, what, is, what is the best way to, to control club root? So we've worked a lot with, uh, with the club root researchers to, to determine, you know what, club root resistance deployed ahead of club root is actually a really good way to, to keep club root uh, resting spores from building up and as, as a, uh, uh, to prevent the, that disease from really spreading more aggressively. And so like that would be an example of, of a new message that, that we've worked with researchers in order to help develop. And, and we're extending that to the agronomists in the industry who help uh, filter that down to the, the producers themselves. And the team is Canada-wide? Yes, yeah, so we've got agronomists in, in all three uh, prairie provinces and, and uh, each agronomy specialist has a, uh, an area of specialty in which they, they work in. Like Gregory, as an example, is, is our uh, is our sustainability and uh, and beneficial insect lead, and we'll have a club root lead, a black leg lead, a insect pest lead, a lead, and so each agronomist or agronomy specialist is is really focused on on working with researchers and the wider industry in, in one area of specialty. Overall. So maybe Greg, I'll ask you, what does a typical day look like for a, an agronomy specialist? Oh wow, I don't think I could actually pin down a, a typical day. It's um, in spite of the fact that we are that we have fewer and fewer field responsibilities, that still does form a like a, a pretty central core of our of our day to day operations. So definitely be available in the piece to because uh, that's my region is northern Alberta, and I actually want to point out four provinces. Uh, I actually also represent British Columbia. Uh -huh. So, yeah. but. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, field responsibilities then would would include uh, helping out with diagnostic problems when they do arise in the field. So I'm like I'm definitely available for those sorts of things. But as well, uh, I sit on a couple of different uh, groups and organizations. Uh, again, around the beneficial insects and sustainability angle, aimed at uh, developing metrics to determine what the sustainability of our cropping practices actually are and whether they are or are not sustainable. Um, I get to liaise with basically the international research community on a lot of uh, well, a lot of these topics surrounding sustainability be it soil and water conservation or my my passion I guess would be the beneficial insect ecology uh, and it's it's actually pretty fascinating that I've uh, been uh, basically allowed to uh, attend these academic conferences and, uh, and and field tours over a pretty substantial portion of the canola growing regions of the, of the planet uh, and and learn what I can there and then bring it back here to incorporate into our best management practices as well um, with that, uh, I've also been in uh, leading, I guess, the uh, the pollinators and uh, and honeybee health efforts at council as well. So working with the various organizations, the Honeybee Health Coalition out of the United States and the Bee Health Roundtable in Canada, uh, basically to establish dialogue between farmers and beekeepers to prevent the sorts of um, incidents that we saw in Ontario in 2012 and based working with then our growers to extend best management practices to preserve and enhance their their populations as much as possible so a, a typical day um, is is really uh, purveying a lot of information um, and be it, a, it personally to a farmer in the field or via a webinar um, internationally or even attendance at a conference um, 
in well in in, in Winnipeg, in uh, Des Moines, Iowa, in Malmo, Sweden. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it depends on the topic at hand. And you mentioned that you're bringing a lot of information back to Canada. What else do you see as a, a positive for the Canadian canola industry in your role in this? The uh, t to me, it's the amount of exposure and the interaction that we have with the global research community. Um, in in my avenues, it's been you know beneficial insects and, and pest insects to uh, to some extent as well. Uh, soil and water conservation is like those are. A, a, I'm, a, I'm a zero-till zealot. I, I come from. Uh, soil and soil and water conservation. So it's 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 awesome that we have such um, a relationship with the international research community that, that we can email or call people at these institutions all over North America, in, in Australia, in in Northern Europe, and and get answers to emerging problems that we have. Uh, insects, for example, that are spreading into our regions, we can learn from uh, the British what their interactions with uh, various midges and. Uh, like stem, cabbage stem flea beetles as well as pollen beetles which are expanding out of their range in eastern Canada especially as you know the, the, the temperature warms we're going to see these sorts of things moving into our production areas so it gives us the opportunity to learn what the people in other canola growing regions have not only had to deal with but the solutions that they've had and 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 what hasn't worked and that certainly goes back to the work that we do with club root as well Mm -hmm. So, Clint, um, I w sorry, did you want to say, add something there? Oh, no, well, actually, yeah, I would like to add something because Greg is, is a really good example of, of what a, an agronomy specialist uh, uh, contributes to the industry, like especially like your Bees Matter campaign. Greg was is the, is one of the public faces of the of the whole Bees Matter, which has a, a lot of uh, uh, doing a lot of really good work at at uh, interfacing with the public and and showing, hey, canola contributes a lot to to bee health and and that there's a really beneficial uh, relationship between bees and bee health and, and the canola industry. And so he's done a, an excellent job at, at uh, putting a public face to, uh, to the canola industry in, in that regard. Mm -hmm. so. so if we're an interested, whether it's an agronomist or farmer, and we have a specific interest in canola, how do we find which specialist to talk to? Uh, well, yeah. Each of our agronomy specialists, and, and we do like to refer to us uh, ourselves as, as agronomy specialists because we, we are doing a, a lot more than what, uh, uh, I wouldn't want to say a typical agronomist, but what uh, most agronomists do offer. And uh, uh, so our, our, that specialist role is, is, is pretty important, or pretty central to, to what, we, what we do. Um, our, the Canola Council webpage is, is a good place to, to see, like, if there is a, an issue in a particular geography, uh, each of us agronomy specialists, we do maintain a territory in addition to our, our area of specialty. But on our website as well, we do have a listing of, of the areas of specialty each each uh, agronomy specialist is, is responsible for. So, um, uh, yeah, that's one of our major vehicles. Did you want to add? Yeah, I, I would definitely add the, uh, the resource that we have available as part of the Canola Watch website. You're going to find all of our specialties, areas of expertise in there as well, along with articles that we've written on those topics and the... Uh, the cataloged history of, of seven years now of weekly Canola Watch articles that are regularly updated with the, the most modern science that we have available to us. That's a, a, a pretty huge resource. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. It's well, been a pleasure to learn about the, the team and all of your specialists. Thank you very much. Thanks.